Welcome. Now we're discussing the critical security controls and in this module we're going to talk about critical security control number three which is secure configurations for hardware and software. Let's take a look at the overall graphic. Now as you can see the first five of the critical security controls which are outlined in blue on your left are considered more important and then the rest of the 15 are also there and this completes the 20 critical security controls. I'd also like to mention that the first 10 controls, uh, first 10 critical security controls are related to systems and if you look at the Excel sheet which is available on the CIS Center for Internet Security website which publishes uh, these controls, the first 10 controls are related to systems and there's a family categorization so the family here in the first 10 controls is systems and then for 11, 12 and 13 uh, the uh, critical security controls belong to the network family and then um, 14 is uh, related to applications and then 15 wireless access control is again network and then all the way from 16 to 20 these are all belonging to the application family so we have three types of families um, for which are categorized for these 20 security controls and each control belongs to one family either systems which are more, most of the controls belong to the systems category and then we have network um, or then application. Now control number 3.1 establish standard secure configurations of your operating systems and software applications. Now I would like to mention here just to remind you that in this four layer security transformation model which we introduced in this course which Delta Tech, my, com my consulting company uses and we're deploying this throughout the country in, in Pakistan to correct and fix the security of the enterprise. The very first layer of that security transformation model is security hardening. And that's where the journey of security starts. And if you look at this, um, this module and this critical security control, 3.1 says establish standard secure configurations of your operating systems and software applications. Standardized images should represent hardened versions of the underlying operating system and the applications installed on the, system, on, on the system. So we're talking about hardening of the operating system and the applications which will be running on that application system, on, on, on that operating system, and uh, storing and securing um, these images which we call hardened uh, images. So these become hardened um, images and then we have to use these images whenever we have a new deployment. So, so this, this point is really very important, 3.1. And continuing, these secure images should be validated, which means that they should be checked and refreshed on a regular basis to update their security configuration in light of recent vulnerabilities and attack vectors. So um, today, you may have hardened Windows Server 2012 operating system. However, in a few days, weeks, what may happen and what is surely likely to happen is that there are new vulnerabilities that will, be, uh, that will come to light and they will be published. And then um, the secure image needs to be updated so that the new, um, uh, either the new benchmark, for example, from Center for Internet Security, the benchmark that we're using for Windows Server 2012, that may be entirely updated or what may happen is that there may be updates or there may be new vulnerabilities and then we have to uh, we have to go and we have to make sure that the new vulnerabilities um, are also fixed in the secure image and the secure image is hardened and is secure from all respects so uh, this point is really asking us that you have to keep them up to date once you establish a secure image you can't just um, you keep using that without updating it now follow strict configuration management building a secure image that is used to build all new systems that are deployed in the enterprise. So now here we're talking about change management and whenever a change is made in the production system, the change management process has to be followed so that there is a documented um, uh, you know, process or activity that can be tracked and uh, which, which, uh, which, which, which leaves a track record and we can find what changes happen and it is controlled and approved as well. So that's why change management is very important. Any existing system that becomes compromised should be re-imaged with a secure build. So obviously 
um, any system that in which uh, there there has been a breach of security or uh, we have lost the um, the security um, posture um, or ha it has been attacked or hacked or there has been any other problem with related to security on the system we should rebuild um, that system from the secure image now continuing 3.2 Regular updates or ex exceptions to this image, which is the secure image, should be integrated into the organization's change management process. So now that you have a Windows Server 2012 secure image, for example, what we're saying is that that should become the standard to use that secure image. And if there is any exception, that also must be documented in the change management process. Um, if you're not going to deploy the secure image whenever you're going to deploy a new um, Windows Server 2012 instance, for example, then you know you need to put it in change management. So that also is controlled, documented, and it can be tracked and it's auditable. So images should be created for workstations, servers, and other system types used by the organization. That's uh, that's obvious. 3.3: Store the master images on securely configured servers, validated with integrity checking tools, capable of continuous inspection and change management to ensure that only authorized changes to the images are possible. So there are, um, there are some repository uh, systems, which and there are many available on open source. And whenever you, um, so, so images and, uh, and software can be stored, and um, you can control who has authority to upload, for example, a new image or a new version of the software. And, and so what we're really talking about here is that you need to make sure that the server is secured where these images are, 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 uh, are placed. And then you need to have change management um, and, and integrity checking tools also to make sure that no unauthorized change is happening to any file. Alternatively, these master images can be stored in offline machines, air gap from the production network with images copied via secure media to move them between the image storage servers and the production network. So there's here, there's, there's a suggestion that um, you can actually place the images on a secure server completely separate from your production in order to limit unauthorized access. 3.4, perform all remote administration of servers, workstation, network devices, and similar equipment over secure channels. And what are these secure channels? Um, continued for 3.4, protocols such as Telnet, VNC, RDP, which is remote desktop protocol, or others that do not actively support strong encryption should only be used if they are performed over a secondary encryption channel, such as SSL, TLS, or IPsec. So, um, you know, um, open protocols such as Telnet, VNC, RDP, which do not have security embedded in them, um, should not be actually used to remotely configure uh, devices. And uh, we should use secure protocols only. That's all that we have for this module. Thank you.